Hey everybody and welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to be taking a look into all of the elements that make up the learning environment, starting with skills. Now, obviously, there are a thousand and one different skills a good athlete can possess, with most skill sets changing dependent on the game or sport. For this reason, we like to utilise categories to identify and classify them all and make it all easy to understand. So, in this video, we're going to take a look at these classifications, that being open or closed environment, fine or gross motor skills, and discrete serial or continuous movement. Ah, with so many different categories, this may seem a bit overwhelming, but do not stress. This is actually a really simple dot point in the syllabus, which you can have a look at just below this video. All right, enough chat, let's get straight into it. Before we jump into our classifications though, we need to understand the difference between a motor skill and a motor program. Understanding and applying the correct terminology is an essential for success in PDHPE, so make sure you're paying attention. A motor skill is pretty simple. It's the physical execution of a movement, so every time you move, you're performing a motor skill. Then there's motor programs. A motor program is a combination of skills combined together to make an overall movement. So, for example, batting and baseball is a motor program. It involves a series of skills coordinated together, such as grip, stance, feet placement, swing, and follow through. And altogether, we have a skill. All right, let's start things off nice and easy and take a look at open and close skills. An open environment skill refers to a skill performed in an environment influenced by external factors, not just an athlete's own ability. Athletes must be able to adapt to this kind of unpredictable performing environment, meaning technique and strategy may need to be modified. A great example of this would be other players or opponents. Think about a penalty shootout in soccer. The player has practiced this hundreds of times, but now there's a goalkeeper in the way. Other examples include crowds or the weather, all factors outside of the sportsman's control, which he must subsequently adapt to. On the other hand, we have closed environment skills. Closed skills aren't heavily affected by their immediate environment, meaning they're more stable and predictable. The opposition doesn't have much impact on the performance of the skill, and it's not receptive to weather changes, meaning the athlete can exercise much more control. Think about something like 10-pin bowling. The lane always stays the same, and there's always 10 pins in the same place. The weather doesn't affect the performance of the skill, and there's no physical opposition in the way. As such, this skill can be practiced over and over in the same conditions and with much more control. Now, different sports may be popping to mind and you might be thinking, ah, oh, that sport's a little bit of both, and you'd be exactly right. Skills aren't strictly open or closed, they sit on a continuum. Let's think about it this way. Bowling might be seen as an almost closed skill, Somewhere further up, we might have the penalty kick. And then right up the top, we might have something like sailing, where you have to be aware of heaps of external factors. Determining whether a skill is performed in an open or closed environment is all about the extent to which external factors affect how an athlete performs. Alrighty, so next up, let's take a look at fine and gross motor skills. Fine motor skills are those that require the use of only small muscle groups, like throwing a dart or putting in golf. Picture, a fine lady putting a golf ball. Now, these skills require control. Even though fine skills only require small muscle groups, they need a lot of precision and normally take a lot longer to perfect. Just because Judy makes it look so easy doesn't mean it's actually all that simple. Gross skills refer to the use of large muscle groups, usually the arms and legs, for things like running or throwing. Picture a big, gross, sweaty rugby player running and catching a ball. Unlike fine motor skills, gross skills can generally be learnt more quickly and from a younger age. It's a pretty simple distinction between the two, so just remember, the fine lady doing the small, precise skill and the big, gross, sweaty rugby player using big muscle groups for more simple skills. All right, we're not done just yet. Who knew skills could be classified in so many different ways? Next up, 
we're going to break down motor skills into discrete, serial or continuous. Now, these classifications are concerned with how well defined the beginning and end of the skill are. Discrete skills are super simple. They have a clear start and finish, like throwing a ball. You hold the ball up and you throw it to wherever you want it to go. The throw is over, the skill is complete. It's one skill and it has a distinct start and a distinct end. Now, compare that to something like doing a layup in basketball. You're running and dribbling the ball, you pick it up, take two steps, jump, lift the ball and throw it with the right accuracy and force. Oof, tough work. This is a serial skill. Serial skills involve a combination of smaller movements in a specific order that are combined together to make a total skill. So when we bring all of those movements together, we get a layup, a serial skill. Last but not least, we have continuous skills. This one should be super easy to wrap your head around. Continuous skills, if the title doesn't already give it away, are repetitive and ongoing for a particular period of time. Think of going for a run. You're just doing the same motions over and over again until you decide to stop. That's really all there is to it. So remember, discrete, we have a discrete beginning and end. Serial, we have a series of actions that make up the overall skill. And continuous is just a skill repeated over and over. So guys, that's all the different ways we can classify skills. Now that we have all of this information, here is a final thing to remember. When considering the nature of a skill, the first important thing to remember is that skills are classified along a spectrum. It's more simple than you thought, right? So when you're writing about a skill, don't get overwhelmed with all the different things it could be. Think about the different aspects one at a time and it becomes pretty easy. Alright guys, that's all for now. See you next time.